In this video, I'm going over the second boss in the Mythic Plus version of Halls of Infusion. I'm explaining every mechanic and sharing what to do from the perspective of a tank, healer, and DPS. So no matter what role you play, you'll be able to clear this boss on higher keys. If you guys enjoy tips and tricks like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out this content live on my Twitch channel. I'll put a link in the description below where I run Mythic Plus with the community. Now, do note, in this video, I'm only going over bosses. I did another video, link in the description below, where I go over the exact route you need to get to 100% and explain every mechanic for every trash mob, what to interrupt, what to stun, what to avoid. But for this video, let's dive right into the bosses. This is the second boss in Halls of Infusion, the Gulping Goliath. Now, throughout this fight, we'll be taking a close look at my boss meters here. I use big wigs for raids and little wigs for dungeons. If you guys want some of the add-ons that I use, click the link in the description to get into our Discord. We have a guides and resources category where we share the best add-ons, weak ores, and so much more to help you succeed in 10.1 for season two. First ability we see going off here is called Overpowering Croak. This is gonna be some pulsing AOE damage that is gonna be followed by these little frogs that will spawn. We see the uh, that going out, some pulsing raid die damage going out there, followed by little frogs going out right here. Now these frogs are very important to understand because they will put a poison on every player every time they melee attack you. This is super important to understand because you will get a stack for every time they hit you. If you allow yourself to get 10 stacks, they you will just instantly die. You just fall over instantly, nothing you can do about it. But these can be cleansed. So if you've got the cleanse totem from a shaman, that's amazing. Obviously, if you've got healers that can cleanse, any uh, prot paladin or holy paladin can do this as well. You want to make sure do not let your stacks get to 10. But there are some things you can do about these frogs. You can either AOE them down, you can crowd control them, you can kite them. But this is what I recommend the most. You see the boss right now doing an ability called Gulp. Gulp will do a few things. It'll spawn this green circle around the boss. The tank needs to make sure that he is standing inside of the green circle. The frog is actually about to eat somebody. If he does not eat anybody, he will become hangry. That is actually the name of the ability. And it will become enraged. He'll grow. He'll become red. And he will do 50% more physical damage. But there's a caveat to that. Not only will he eat a player, but he will also eat the frogs if the frogs are within the green circle at the end of his gulp cast. So you'll see right there that our DPS, they placed all of the green circles, uh, the frogs in the green circle. And now we look, all the frogs are gone. That is clutch. Next time we do that, I'm gonna teach you a really good advanced tips and trick that'll help, show, help make sure that you get rid of all the frogs every single time. Next ability is Toxic Effluvia, if that's even how you say it. This again is gonna be more pulsing raid-wide damage. There's a the second tick. Here's a third one. Again, for that one, if a DPS, especially on super high keys, this is a 17 tyrannical. So on super high keys, you might want to pop a defensive. We have a holy paladin, so maybe an aura mastery would work well here. But just know that it is really, really high uh, raid wide damage. Next ability is belly slam. This one's very easy to avoid. He's going to look at a certain target. It's just completely random. And he's going to look at them and jump in the air. And there's going to be a huge circle on the ground that is going to that he'll land on and it'll pretty much one shot you especially on higher keys tyrannical this is going to be a great time obviously for some sort of movement boost so as a paladin you see aj grabs his horse right there but here's a really advanced tip and trick if you are an evoker you could do a rescue a priest could do a life grip if you notice that your teammate's not going to get out you could also as a shaman you could place a wind rush totem right on top of your player or even before the ability goes off everybody could stack you put the rin rush totem right on top of you so that no matter who he picks everyone uh has a movement and speed druids could obviously do their roar if you can ever use your utility to help a teammate do it but all you gotta do is get out of the circle and you'll be good to go again we're gonna see another overpowering croak again that is just pulsing raid wide damage you'll see the damage going out now followed by the frogs now let me walk you through a really good tip on how to ensure that you can get rid of the frogs every single time remember this gulp ability by the way toxic effluvia more raid wide damage going out and again make sure you're tracking your stacks but gulp is going out in four seconds you can't hear the audio from this poll but what i am actually communicating to my team is get ready to run in four seconds the good thing to do, as soon as the ads come out, everyone get in melee range 
and start kiting in a circle around the boss. You want to be really close to melee range. Why, uh, melee? Why? Because of what I'm about to explain next. The moment that he starts that cast, the green circle appears. The moment that you see that green circle, what you want to do as a DPS is you want to just run through the boss. The reason that is, is those frogs are chasing you. So if you run through the boss at that exact time, you will have just enough time to get through the boss and make the frogs chase you. You get out of the circle in time, but the frogs will be in the circle, meaning that the boss will eat it. Now, you don't always have to run directly through the boss. We saw Sly Guy right here a second ago. He was right there, and he noticed that his frogs spawned over there. So he kind of adjusted quickly. He noticed that in order to these frogs for them to get to me, I don't actually have to run through the boss. I can run down here at an angle. And you saw that happen a second ago. I'll, I'll kind of try and replay it for us so you can see that a little bit closer. He did a really good job there. Gulp's coming in five seconds. Everybody you can see is in melee range like I was calling out during the fight sly guy spawns he's right there he sees that frogs are over here he ring of pieces them super pro really great move to keep these away another thing you could do is if the frogs are in the middle uh shaman could cap toe them them you could stun them so that they like stay in the circle don't get out but he notices they're chasing me from this direction he moves over they get in the circle and frogs get eaten this was a super clean run because everybody was doing that perfectly and it really is just a rinse and repeat. Make sure the tank stays in the green circle to make sure that he gets uh, he gets eaten. Don't let your stacks go to 10 because you will instantly die. If you are someone that has a cleanse, be sure to use your cleanse to help your teammates, not just yourself, especially if it's a shorter cooldown. And as long as you kite these frogs into the green circle, they really are not super challenging to deal with. This fight only gets really overwhelming when you don't take care of the frogs the little frogs will become overwhelming they'll keep on increasing their stacks you'll end up getting to 10 and they will not go away unless you either kill them or the frog eats them and then last thing i'll mention is if your tank does not stand within the green circle and get eaten like you see me doing here the boss not only enrages but he will stay enraged until he eats somebody again meaning that he will stay enraged until all the mechanics cycle through belly slam toxic effluvia until the next green circle and then if he doesn't need someone again he'll, he'll just stay in range for the whole fight so if you are finding yourself in a pug where your tank is not stepping into the green circle you can be the one that gets eaten you're just going to take a lot of damage so i would encourage you pop a defensive pop something really big make sure you're topped off but if you notice your tank is not doing this, you can do it for them. It might not one-shot you, but it's going to be pretty, pretty risky. If you guys enjoy tips and tricks like this, and you guys want me to get more Mythic Plus, and come hang out with my dog, Luna, be sure to subscribe to this channel, and also click the link in the description below to get plugged into our Twitch channel, where I do runs with the community. I appreciate y'all watching and supporting this channel, and of course, all those who support on Patreon. I appreciate y'all. Catch you in the next one. Luna came in clutch there. You're gonna get me free subscribers, Luna. And we added, you added value to the video. Because I said, if people wanna come see you, they can join my stream. Thank you for the free viewers. You're doing your part to help pay the bills. That's right, you wanna eat? You wanna eat? You gotta do your part.